No, it means except one. He said, all his disciples. In African, say Almar. To have Almar, Om Fatla and Fatla. In Zulu, he says, Bamshia Bonke. Baba Lega. Bonke. I'm asking the Christian Zulu. Bonke means Bonke in your language? You Englishmen all mean all in your language? Right now, we, let's come back and deal so, with So, so let me, let me, let me tell you. So, because the knowledge is from here, they were not eyewitnesses or your witnesses of the happening, they assumed that the man who was dead and buried for three days, he must be stinking in his grave. Such a man when you see, naturally you're terrified. So Jesus wants to assure them that he's not what they're thinking. They're thinking he's come back from the dead, resurrected. So he says, behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit, any spirit, has no flesh and bones as you see. Yeah. And they believed not for joy and wonder, they felt it. And wondered, what happened man? I thought the man was dead and buried. So he said, have you here any meat? Something to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb. And he took it and he ate in the very side. What is that? To prove what? That I am the same for not alive. I am the same fellow man. Damn fools, what are you afraid of me for? Because they are afraid because they think he's a ghost. Now, let's come back and deal with the text. Now, we've gotten clear away today from the fact of proving either the Quran is the divine inspiration of God or the Bible. We're not even talking about that now. So we've gone clear away from that. Right. So neither the proposition. Back. So if you want to make the proposition is that you can pose the problem for me. Now. No, no, you have posed the problem for me. I'm coming and, back to and the when I was and I want to deal you, with you, this. You, text. you didn't give me a chance at all to hear that the Quran is the word of God. You haven't. You put me to the test. And I was answering that. And then from that we got drifted well, up onto this. We were talking but about now, mission. Now, 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 if you want, I explain to you why did the Quran is the word of God. I want to come back first. And no, 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 no. Look, you, want, you, you had your chance to prove to us that the Bible is God's word, which you failed to do, which Basil failed to do. Now, you have challenged Can we me. Deal with this no, no, you have challenged me. Can we deal with this text? No. You have yes, challenged me. No, wait, 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 wait. You are putting in the minds of these people what the text doesn't say. No, no, wait, and wait. I don't want no. to argue the text. But you see, at all. so now you're going to say, still, at the end of it, he said, look, I didn't tell you anything about the Quran. And which is the fact. No, 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 you are, you are doing this. To no, 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 you are doing this to me. You are doing this to me. You see, I asked you. I made a proposition to you. Well, you carry on, I'll talk to you. I made a proposition. Show me one place in your Bible where Jesus says, I'm God, or where he says, Worship me. I said, I'm prepared to accept. Now, instead of giving me that, I'm sure you understood English well, you give me something what Thomas said. Suppose he said it. Still, it's not what I want. I asked you, Show me one place where Jesus says. And in the whole Bible, there isn't such a thing. Right. So, in answer to all that, we drifted off from the subject. But let's get back to the point. The point is that you have had your say about the Bible, that the Bible, you tried to, that the Bible is God's word, and I tried to refute that. Now, it is your duty to listen to me about the Quran, and then you refute it. That's only fair. You want to hear about the Quran? Right. Now, number one, you see, this man Muhammad was absolutely unlearned. This is history. Friends and foe alike, will tell you, Reverend Bosworth Smith, you know, he tells you in his Muhammadan Muhammadanism, his book, he says, illiterate himself. <coughs> he starts with the word illiterate. He says, illiterate himself, scarcely able to read or write. He was yet the author of a book, which is a poem, a code of laws, a book of common prayers, and a Bible all in one. And is reverenced to this day by a six of the whole human race as a miracle of purity of style, of wisdom and of truth. It is the one miracle claimed by Muhammad. His standing miracle, he called it, and a miracle indeed it is. This is Reverend Boswell Smith, a Christian missionary. This is what he had to say. Now, the fact that he was illiterate, friends and foe alike, the book itself, the Quran says the man was illiterate. He didn't know how to read or write. Up to the age of 40, he didn't make any kind of claims whatsoever. He was not a hot gospeler. He was no Bible thumper. He didn't stand in the marketplaces trying to, you know, attract attention. Nothing at all. He was led a normal Arab life as a child. You know, he looked after his uncle Abu Talib's goats. At the age of 12, he went once to Syria on a trade caravan with his uncle. Then at the age of 25, he goes for his uh, a rich lady whom he subsequently married. But he never made any kind of pretensions to prophethood or any kind of position in the community. 
man is respected, but had he died before the age of 40, we would have never heard about the man. At the age of 40, he happens to be in a cave, some three miles north of the city of Makkah. And the archangel Gabriel comes to him and addresses him in his mother tongue. Iqra. Iqra means to read. And Muhammad being unlearned, if we read in the traditions, then he says, Ma ana He said, I'm not learned. So the angel of God commands him a second time, Iqra, read. And again he pleads, Ma ana He said, I'm not learned. He's terrified. The third time the angel of God embraces him hard and commands him, Iqra, bismi rabbi kalladhi khala. So read in the name of the Lord and Cherisher who created. So he repeats word for word what was being given to him because this Arabic word Iqra means to read, to recite, to rehearse, to repeat. It has all those shades of meaning. So now he grasps that what he was required to do was to repeat. So he repeats the words that were given to him. Iqra, bismi rabbi khalaq. Read in the name of the Lord and cherish who created. Khalaq al-insana min alak. He who created man from a mere plot of congeal blood. Iqra rabbuk al-akra. So you read in the Lord is most bountiful. He who taught the use of the pen. Taught man that which he knew not. And he repeats these words. Five verses. We give him. Now, if you look at these five verses, if you read them, study them, the first revelation. I have been asking psychologists to account for this. So look, this man, the very first words he utters are about reading writing, learning things unknown before, which is not really his problem. His problem were the problems of his people, drunkards, adulterers, gamblers, fratricidal wars, as Gibbon described them, that the human brute, the Arab before Islam, the human brute, almost without sense, is poorly distinguished from the rest of the animal creation. They were only human in form. This was his problem. But instead of talking anything about that, he's talking about reading, writing, learning things unknown before. So come on, account for it. A man is making things up, if he was. Why should he talk about this? Then what is, are his immediate reactions? As soon as the angel departs, he's terrified, shivering all over, he runs home to his dear wife, some three miles south. And he says, cover me up, cover me up. Is this how imposters behave? In the next 23 years of his prophetic life, he brought us this book, the Quran. The Quran. This book here, the whole of this, the Quran in Arabic. 23 years of his prophetic life, according to the needs, he gave them guidance, guidance, guidance. <coughs> Elevate knowledge of God, he gave them. Every aspect of human life, all your problems, he answered them for you. He guided mankind into all truth, as Jesus had prophesied. Any problem that you have got, I said, we give the answer, solution to your problems. He has given it to you. Our brother, although I, I, I a vessel, you know, I said it so clearly. I said the problems are the problems of alcoholism. What is the answer that the Holy Ghost gave you in 2000 years? No answer. Problem of surplus women. I said your own motherland for 3 million women, they can't get husbands. What is the answer? No answer. Problem of race. Racist. The most racist people are the Christian nations of the West. No answer. What is the answer that the Holy Ghost gave you? How are you going to solve this problem? No answer. If you remember again, and it's recorded. Thank God. No answer. This man gives you answers to all your problems. Oil is here. Race is here. How to solve this problem. Problem of surplus women is here. How to solve the problem. I'm not just talking about just being nice and kind and you know you just believe and everything will be alright. It's not happening alright. Because you know, I don't know whether you will sound like an American. Are you? Yes. Last June. Last June in San Francisco. Quarter million sodomites were gathered there on a pilgrimage led by 50 lesbians on motorcycles in a nation which claims to have 75 million reborn Christians. <laughs> quarter million, you know what's quarter million? You know, imagine in a nation with 75 million reborn Christians, you got quarter million sodomites gathering for a celebration on a pilgrimage led by lesbians. When I was in London, 8,000 gays gathered in London's high park. Now, I ask you, what are the answers to these problems? Solve those problems. Quarter million gays. <laughs> then we evangelicals about the books on sex that they are writing. You read them. Go to the Christian bookshop and get them. And what would they tell you? I, I don't want these people to record. 
what is written inside there by evangelicals. You know, people of Billy Graham's caliber. What they're telling you about sex. The reason is because you haven't got it. Divorce. You have divorced by the millions. Drunkards, nine million drunkards in America. They call them problem drinkers. I said, what is the answer to your problem? This man gives you answers to all. He fulfills the prophecy of Jesus that he will guide.